tell you his story. Our friends, thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay. Enrique. No, but no, no, no. We just want to be treated just around here. We want to stop discrimination in this area. The sheriff from the county? They want us to, we want them to respect us as human beings. Okay. He's kind of quiet and afraid that his name will be out there, that his face will be out there. He has been stopped four times, many a times, right here in this area. Um, right now, he owes over a thousand dollars in tickets. If he doesn't pay those, he's going to jail. And we all know, according to Sheriff Mellon, he said, anybody less in jail is going to get deported. And he has a family to support. What's he going to do? How can he get to work to support his How can he take his kids to school? All he wants is justice. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. Sister Joyce. Did you have anyone else to give a testimony? Okay. All right. Now Pastor Michael is going to talk to us about the connection between our detention centers where our immigrant brothers and sisters are held. Our closest one is in Kenosha. He's going to talk about the connection between criminal justice and our detention centers. We're all one people here, no color. We are all the same. We're all human. We're all human. We're all together. We believe. One of our local legislators, uh, Assembly Representative Tom Weatherston, is one of the co-sponsors of both of these bills. The thing that troubles me most is I... The thing that troubles me most as I read the text of those bills is that it speaks about aliens. Yes. And as I think about that term, it says that people who are brother, our brothers and sisters are from someplace else and do not belong here, and that they are outside of the law. Some might say that illegal aliens is a term that is synonymous with un immigrants. That's not true. Come, my brother! But words matter. And these words have connotations that suggest that these people who are our brothers and sisters are nothing more than other. Completely other. When we begin with a term like illegal aliens, we don't need to look any deeper, and it shapes a way of seeing. It shapes a way of telling our story. If we start with a term like illegal aliens, then it leads into a logic that makes sense of every effort to protect ourselves and our communities from the aliens who threaten our way of life. That's what these bills do. that would pass a resolution or an order that would keep employees of the municipality and others from investigating into the legal status 
of any person who's living in our community. Malcolm, it would require that somebody who's arrested would have to be naming their documentation status. And if any municipality resisted doing that, their funding from the state could be taken away. They would be punished. So why would we begin there? Why would we start by naming people illegal aliens? Why don't we start instead by seeing the face of our brother, the very human face of our sister? If we begin there, then we might listen and hear the stories, the life journeys, how people have come to be here and receive. We would likely then hear how people have come to live in our community without that. Why that is so difficult. We would hear the story of their suffering under the drug cartels, not being drug dealers themselves. We would hear of the loss of employment as a result of NAFTA. We would discover the gifts and strengths that they bring to our community and their ambition to create a community of safety and opportunity. Fixing the complex system of immigration hard work. It's close. It will not be easy. The store is close, dude. The targeting and yeah, training the most vulnerable does not make a good beginning. So this pattern is familiar. We've done this before. If you haven't yet seen the documentary, it's about the 13th Amendment.